Searching buildings or anywhere up close uh, when it's dark out can be tough. There are several considerations we want to think about for low light searches. And the assumption is in, in this, this type of scenario is that you are searching your house. You heard a bump in the night and you're going to go search to see what's going on. And you, ha you have reason to believe it's not just the dog or the balloon popped from the birthday party, but you have reason to believe it's a little bit more serious. Um, of course, the, the conventional advice is to call uh, government, uh, have the government come and save you. Uh, but if you chose to or were required to protect yourself, um, you'd want to search your house. So as you're going through your house, the, the problems with current lights are that most of them are way too bright. And you don't want a light that's too bright. Why not? Well, there are times that you do. The time that you would want a bright light is when you find bad guy crouched there trying to hide in the corner. You want to be able to blind him, light up the whole room really brightly, make it so that when he looks at you, he can't see you, but you can see everything. Definitely want a bright light for that. If you're using that bright light, though, as you're walking through your house searching, as you're turning the light on and off, your pupils are constricting and then they are dilating. They're going back and forth each time. So when there's a lot of light, your eyes, pupils go down really small. And then as soon as the light goes off, it takes some time for them to come back so that you can see. And so this is why, you know, just go into any room and just practice this, have the lights turned on, turn the lights off, and then see how many seconds it takes for you to be able to see uh, whatever object on the other side of the room, if it's just a very faint light. So this is one problem. Bright, bright lights are just not good for searching because now you're delayed two, three, four seconds until your eyes are back to where you can really see things well. So while you're searching, you actually want a fairly dim light. Well, one of the ways that uh, this is uh, people have tried to fix this over the years has been with uh, lights that have a, your first click is really bright. Your second click is a little bit dimmer. Maybe you have a third click that's a, a red light uh, that's, that's even less. It's not going to blind as much. It's just it has other, you know, somebody 200 yards away is less likely to see it. And then maybe the next switch is a, a flashing red light. <clears throat> maybe the next light is a strobe. But the problem with these things is that when you're in a panicked situation, now this doesn't, uh, this doesn't apply to the people that are out there fighting in 10, 20, 30, 50 gunfights a year. If you're a special forces type person, you're trained and experienced enough that you're not panicking necessarily every time you're in one of these situations. But for the other... 7 billion of us that are just kind of peace-loving folks that hang out in our houses and don't try to go out and start fights, we're not going to have that kind of experience, that, that mental toughness. So the chances of, for us, being able to remember, oh, I need to go three clicks to get to my dim light for searching, and then I need to go two more clicks to get to my strobe once I found him to distract him, but now I'm ready to shoot because now he's pulled a knife out, so now I need to change it to the bright light. You're not going to be able to do that. It's just it's not going to happen. Um, we, we wish we could, but we're not going to rise to that level unless we have trained and trained and trained and trained and trained with really good realistic training. So knowing that that's probably not going to happen, a light has to be really simple. It has to have buttons that you can feel. Here's another thing that it needs to have. You can't have a click, a click on and off where it makes an audible clicking sound. You want it to be nice and quiet so that you can move through the house, do your momentarily momentary push. If your hand comes off the light, the light goes off. So you do your momentary light of the area that you're searching, <clears throat> take your light off. Now it's dark, you change your position. In case there was somebody there that wasn't in the area you were searching and they start shooting at you, you don't want to be where you were when the light was on. So you've moved over, over to the side. And then you light up another area, turn the light off, move to another area. This is the preferred method for most people who search buildings. So we want to have the momentary on and off. We want it to be simple. We don't want it to be too bright. So how about simply having something attached to the gun, a weapon mounted light? Brilliant idea. I suggest that everyone has a weapon mounted light. They are wonderful. What a great invention. Definitely have one of those. Again, my tactical ring light is not to take over that market. You need to have a good weapon mounted light. It's a good idea to have a nice 
everyday carry light that's in a belt loop if you're going to carry it. Um, not arguing about your Surefire or any of your great lights. Keep those. They're wonderful. But you want to have something that's always with you and that you can still flex your hands. So if you have your wonderful Surefire light and you need to open a door, you risk the light bumping against the door knob and making a noise. You risk uh, dropping it as you're grabbing the door knob. So it'd really be nice to have something that's hands-free. Well, to solve this, people have made gloves that you can slide onto your hand that have lights attached to them. But so far, nobody's come up with a good one that has a momentary on-off switch that has the light directed in the, the perfect direction for a gun. Yeah, so that's not the perfect solution. Um, I've actually purchased everything that I can find out there, they, they suck. They pretty much just all suck. Okay, so we need it to stick to our body. We still need to be able to do things, like I mentioned, the turning the doorknob. We need to be able to get in a fight and not have it fall and roll away. Uh, when I say fight, I mean a fist fight or grabbing someone or, or that kind of thing. Uh, we, we need it to stick with us. So that's why I made a, a light that mounts to our finger. Now. We can't have it mount so strongly that someone can grab the light uh, in, a, in a scuffle and use that as a, a way to hold on to us, like you'd grab somebody's ponytail or something. We're not going to give them something to control our body, so I, I made this in such a way that it easily breaks away uh, if you're in that tussle kind of situation, because you'd rather lose your light than lose your finger or have them have complete control of you. Uh, now, another reason that the weapon-mounted light uh, isn't perfect, uh, and actually this is the, the primary reason, is that not everything that you want to illuminate do you necessarily want to point your gun at. So you're searching your house and your spouse says from behind you, you can hear their voice, they say, honey, uh, I found this jacket laying in the hallway, is this yours? Well, when you turn around to look and see, to see if this is bad guys, jacket, if you're not even sure there's a bad guy there, well, if there is a completely strange jacket in the house, might be good to know that. So, you, yeah, you definitely know it wasn't just a something falling, a, a broomstick falling in the closet because it was balanced poorly. It'd be good to know that. Well, you don't want to really illuminate your wife and that jacket turning 